people will pull me aside and say, I, I know you're a memory coach. They'll say in private, I'm just too old. I'm not smart yeah. enough. I have a horrible memory. And I always say, stop. If you fight for your limitations, you get to keep them. They're yours. Your mind is always eavesdropping on your self-talk. So you find yourself saying, I don't have a great memory. Just add a word like yet at the end. I don't have a great memory yet because it keeps the possibility open. So believe first. Jim Quick, the world's top brain coach and globally renowned expert in the speed reading, memory improvement and unlocking limitless potential. Jim is the founder of Quick Brain Universe, author of the best-selling book Limitless and the host of Quick Brain, the number one brain performance podcast with over 60 million downloads and his track record of transforming lives through his innovative teaching, Jim has become a beacon of inspiration for individuals seeking to enhance their cognitive abilities, productivity, and overall quality of life. Do you believe there are some misconceptions about learning or we can learn anything and become masters in anything? I believe we can learn anything that we're committed to as long as Welcome back, Alpha Squad, to a new inspiring episode of the Alpha Talks show, the number one fast-growing show in the region. Today, we are privileged to have with us a true alpha in the realm of brain performance and accelerated learning. Our alpha guest is none other than Jim Quick, the world's top brain coach and globally renowned expert in the speed reading, memory improvement, and unlocking limitless potential. Jim is the founder of Quick Brain Universe, author of the best-selling book Limitless, and the host of the number one brain performance podcast. Quick Brain, with over 60 million downloads of his podcast and track record of transforming lives through his innovative teaching, Jim has become a beacon of inspiration for individuals seeking to enhance their cognitive abilities, productivity, and overall quality of life. From overcoming childhood challenges to becoming a leading figure in the field of brain optimization, Jim's journey is nothing short of extraordinary. His passion for empowering others to unlock their inner superpowers and thrive in the modern world has earned him accolades from students, executives, and top organizations worldwide. So get ready to deep dive into the fascinating world of accelerated learning and brain performance as we embark on a conversation with the one and only Jim Quick. Without further ado, let's welcome Jim Quick to the Alpha Talks show. Thank you for uh, being with us today, Jim. It's, uh, it's an honor. It's so good to be here. been looking forward to this. Thank you, everybody who's tuning in to this. Uh, brainy conversation. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Jim, we have a standard question we, uh, where we open the episode with is when we publish the episode and people will see this thumbnail, the graphics, the, um, the title, and they will think it's a very interesting episode. What can Jim promise them today to gain if they gave us their time? My, uh, my superpowers is helping people unlock their mental superpowers. So the two areas that I want to help everybody today is brain optimization, having your best, your best, brightest brain, and also this field of accelerated learning. I think if there's one skill to master for entrepreneurs today, it's our ability to learn rapidly and translate that learning into action. Your ability to focus, to think, to solve problems, to read faster, to remember, retain, uh, concentrate, all of those are modern day superpowers for an entrepreneur because the faster you can learn, the faster you can earn. I love that. I love how you ended and I love how you said superpowers. Mm -hmm. Who's Jim in a nutshell for our audience in a nutshell? And, and I'm going to dig deep, yeah. but like who's Jim in a nutshell? Uh, for me, I took my mess, turned it into my message. I had a traumatic brain injury, had learning difficulties, put in slow uh, classes. Uh, I lost my grandmother to Alzheimer's. So, so Jim is somebody who's on a mission to build better, brighter brains. No, no brain left behind. Oof. I love how how you said that. Uh, Jim, if you can go back to the childhood period, yeah. and what kind of vivid memory do you have that sparked this interest in the learning, accelerated learning? What sparked, what this memory is? My, my inspiration really was my desperation. Um, early memory was when I was five years old. I was in a kindergarten class in public school, and there were these fire trucks outside, and for me, firefighters are like superheroes to me you know they had their uniforms superhero uniforms and they went towards danger to help people um there were these fire trucks outside of the classroom of the school and you know we're only five years old so we can't see outside the window we're not tall enough so everybody all the kids grabbed their chairs and we i was one of them to be able to stand on to look outside to see these uh modern day superheroes and i um 
I lost my balance. I took a very bad fall head first into a radiator and that was a traumatic brain injury. I was rushed to the emergency room, you know, bleeding everywhere. And where it really showed up, my parents said before I was very playful, very energized, very curious, I became very shut down. And uh, I had these migraines, these headaches every single day when I was five, balance issues, coordination issues, focus issues, memory issues. It took me three years longer to learn how to read. When I was nine years old, I was slowing down a class and being teased uh, pretty harshly <laughs> that day. And a teacher came to my defense. She pointed to me, one of my earliest memories, she pointed to me in front of the whole class and said, leave that kid alone. That's the boy with the broken brain. And that label became my, my limit. So adults have to be very careful of their external words because they often become a child's internal words. You know, a lot of the thoughts and beliefs that we all have as aspiring entrepreneurs, established entrepreneurs, individuals, um, you know, came from our environment, right? And so every single time I did badly in school, which was all the time, I would say, oh, because I have the broken brain. When I was in pick for sports, which was every week, uh, it's, I say, because I have the broken brain. And that became my identity. I had a lot of self-doubt, a lot of self-esteem issues. I was very painfully shy. My superpower growing up was really being invisible because I just didn't have the answer. A quick note, before we jump into this episode, I find this incredibly intriguing. On the back end of our YouTube channel, it says around 75% of you who watch this channel frequently over the lifetime of this channel haven't yet hit the subscribe button. I just wanted to ask you for a favor. It helps this channel so much if you choose to just subscribe. It helps us invite guests that give you great value. It helps us scale the production and as well makes this show bigger and bigger for you. So if I will ask you just one favor, and if you enjoyed the previous episodes and you're currently enjoying this episode, could you please hit the subscribe button? I love your support. It's incredible to see all your comments and engagement and we are just starting. I can't wait to go on this journey with you. Thank you so much and I will repay this gesture by making sure that everything we do on this show makes it bigger, bigger and better. I'm committed to do this promise. Do we have a deal? Thank you so much for subscribing. It means the world to me. How long did it take, Jim? Like how long you stayed in this state? state? Yeah, every, every day till I was 18 years old. So Whoa. it was my entire childhood um, was just full of doubt, um, lack of confidence, uh, lack of self-esteem, uh, belief in myself, because I just I would work hard, you know, came from immigrant parents that yeah. just instilled a level of hard work and discipline. But I didn't do as well as everybody else. You know, so I just felt like there was something wrong with me. When I was 18, I found a mentor that introduced me to uh, the power of the brain, the power of our wow. mind, and uh, the power of learning. And so everything changed after that. But can you tell me about this, like this moment exactly? Yeah. How, like, you know, from five to 18, that's an extremely long period. And the majority of human beings, let's say, they get adapted. Yeah. Like from five to 18, you got used yeah. to it. Okay, I'll live it that way. Yeah. What other options do I have? And at 18, you got introduced to a mentor that changed everything for you. Yeah. So um, when I was 18, I was lucky enough to get into a local uh, university. Um, I didn't have great grades, as you can imagine. Um, I took all these classes. I thought uh, freshman meant I could make a fresh start. And I get, I wanted to show the world, show myself that I was worth something. And uh, I actually did worse. And I was at the point where I was ready to quit school because I didn't have the money to be in school. I didn't want to, to waste the time. Um, the oldest of three siblings, you know, I'd rather, my, you know, the money go to my, my brother or sister because they, you know, had more potential, I felt. Um, but when I told that to a friend saying I was going to quit school, he's like, oh, you know, because I didn't know how to tell my parents, right? They worked so hard. They're sad. They sacrificed so much, had so many jobs. Um, we live in the back of a laundromat that my mom worked at, you know, I mean, everybody has their own origin story. Right. But, um, sure. I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to tell my folks I was going to quit because that was a lot of pressure. And a friend said, Hey, why don't you get some perspective? Uh, you know, I feel like when we change the place we're in or the people we spend time with, sure. we get a different point of view, we get to look at something a little differently. Often the problem is not the problem. Often the problem is how we look at the problem. 
you know, our attitudes and assumptions around the problem. And he was going home that weekend to visit his family. So he says, why don't you come with me, get some time and really think about this. It's a big life decision. So I go and visit his folks and his family and they're pretty well off, had a beautiful home on the water. And the father walks me around his property before dinner and asks me a very innocent question, but it's probably the worst question you could ask me. He says, how's school? Right. It's just a normal question you would ask a kid. (laughs) And I, I break down. I start crying profusely in front of this complete stranger because I have so much emotional angst that I've never expressed. And I tell him my whole broken brain story, ready to quit school. It's not for me. And he says, interesting. You know, he's my first mentor. He says, well, why are you in school? You know, what do you want to be, do, have, share? contribute to the world. And I didn't have an answer because no one's ever asked me that, you know, I just thought you go to school because, you you know, to get a good job. Right. And, uh, and I, and I, I didn't have an answer, but when I start to answer him, he, he pauses, he puts his hand out and says, stop. And he pulls out like a journal out of his pocket and he tears out some sheets and makes me write down my dreams and my goals, what I want to be, do have contribute. And when the exercise is done, I start folding the sheets of paper to put it in my pocket and he rips them out of my hand and he starts to read them. And imagine this 18 year old, very insecure kid in front of this complete stranger who's obviously very successful. And he's looking at my dreams, right? My goals Mm -hmm. that I haven't shared with anybody. And he's like, Jim, you're this close to everything on this list. And if you're watching this on video, I'm just spreading my my index fingers like a foot apart. And I'm like, no way, give me 10 lifetimes. I'm not going to crack that list, uh, that bucket list. And he's a very smart man. He takes his fingers and he puts them to the side of my head, meaning what's in between my my brain is the key. And he takes me into a room of his home that I've never seen before. It is wall to wall, ceiling the floor, covered in books, like a library in his house, right? And remember, I can't read very well. So it's like being in a room full of snakes. (laughs) <laughs> and what makes it worse is he starts grabbing snakes from the shelves and handing them to me. And I start looking at these titles of these books and they're these biographies of some incredible women and men in history and some very early personal growth books. Norman Vincent Peale, The Power of Positive Thinking, Napoleon Hill, Thinking Grow Rich, Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends, Influence People. And he says, Jim, you have to read to succeed. I want you to read one book a week. So to answer your question, like... <laughs> You know, when he says you have to read a book a week, I'm like, I go back to my story, you know, my story. I'm like, I can't read, you know, I'm not, you know, all my issues that I have and I can't do all this. But um, he's like, you know, he's like, don't let school get in the way of your education. And, you know, Mark Twain quote. And I'm like, that's a really good idea, but I still can't do that. You know, because if I say I'm going to do it, I, you know, I have to do it as my parents raised me. And he's like, and he's a very smart man. He takes out my dream list and he starts reading my dreams and my goals out loud. And wow. something about hearing your dreams and goals in someone else's voice out in the universe, it really messed with my mind, my spirit, something fierce. And I, a lot of things, honestly, on that list were things I wanted to do for my parents, things they could never afford to do for mm-hmm. themselves. Or even if they had the money, they wouldn't do it for themselves. And with that motivation, that purpose, I agreed to read one book a week. Fast forward, I'm back at school and I'm sitting at my desk and I have a pile of books I have to read for school and a pile of books I promised to read. And I already couldn't get through pile A. So where do I get the time? I don't eat. I don't sleep. I don't work out. I don't socialize. I just live in the library for weeks and weeks. And one night, two o'clock in the morning, I pass out out of sheer exhaustion. I fall down a flight of stairs. And I hit my head again and I woke up in the hospital two days later. And at this point I'm down to 117 pounds. Like I lost all this weight, malnourished. I was hooked up to all these IVs and I thought I died and it was the darkest time in my life. And, um, I thought there had to be a better way. There has to be a better way. And when I had that thought, the nurse came in and brought me a mug of tea and on it was a picture of Albert Einstein, you know, smart guy. And he, and it says a quote, the same level of thinking that has created your problem won't solve your problem. And it made me say like, what's my problem? I'm a very slow learner. I have a broken brain. And how do I think differently? Can I fix my brain? Can I learn to learn faster? 
and I set my studies aside because I wasn't making traction with that. I wasn't getting any kind of results. And I just start studying, I get really insanely curious about how does my brain work so I could work my brain? And how does my memory work so I could work my memory? I always thought it was interesting in school that they teach you what to learn, you know, math, history, science, but there's no classes on how to learn. True. And I cool. just start focusing on that. And within about 60 days of studying adult learning theory, multiple intelligence theory, brain health, uh, a light switch flipped on and I started to understand things for the very first time. And uh, how I ended up doing this 30 plus years later is for the past three decades teaching as a brain coach, I started to tutor because I wanted to help other people going through the same struggles as I was, my focus. Sorry, Jim, I'll interrupt you here. A lot of people don't understand what the meaning of accelerated learning. What is accelerated yeah. learning from what is regular learning then? Yeah, so traditional learning is, uh, it's funny because in school, like reading, for example, the last time people took a reading class, they were probably six, seven years old. The difficulty demand has increased a lot, but we're still reading it slowly, right? And we're still retaining information. Most people study by repetition. They just repeat things over and over sure. again that they want to memorize. So accelerated learning is the science and art of learning and absorbing, focusing, remembering uh, faster, better, easier. And it's a skill that we all could have. I think if knowledge is power, then learning is our superpower. And it's a superpower we all have. It's just your brain is this incredible learning tool. It's your number one wealth building asset as an entrepreneur, but it doesn't come with an owner's manual, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not user friendly. So I wrote Limitless to be an owner's manual for your brain and your mind to help you overcome limiting beliefs, to help you to have more mental energy and focus to help you study, retain, read uh, better. Because if you can learn how to learn, you could apply that towards anything, medicine, True. marketing, money, management, everything in your life. Here comes my question, Jim. Like a lot of people that we see uh, tell you, I like math. I can't uh, uh, learn science. I can't learn business. I don't like uh, marketing. Do you believe in this or there are some misconceptions about learning? or we can learn anything and become masters in anything. Yeah, I believe the latter. I believe we can learn anything that we're committed to as long as you have the right mindset, motivation, and methods to learn something. Meaning that a lot of people know what to do. They know what the methods are, the strategies are, but they don't still do it. But usually what happens is we self-sabotage is usually a mindset issue. Like we don't believe it's possible. We don't believe we're capable of it. Maybe somebody else is, but we're not. Or maybe we don't believe we deserve that success. Or they're not motivated and they procrastinate. They put things off. They, have, they don't have purpose or enough energy or the things are too confusing and they get stuck you know, along the way. So I think you control the controllables in life. And the three things you could always control is your mindset, your motivation, and the methods, your head, your heart, and your and your hands, if mm -hmm. you will, you, you know, your wit, your will, the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, we help people to unlock and unlimit those areas of their life. Jim, can you share with us a success story that you had with your, like people you coached, you mentored, that really like the accelerated learning helped them a lot. So can people can visualize the result? Absolutely. So um, when I learned these skills, my very first success story was myself, because I think we have to be a product of our product as an entrepreneur. But also, you know, this is the first brain I helped. And now our goal is to, you know, impact a billion brains. The, the, when I started to tutor when I was 18 years old to help people struggling and suffering the way I did, one uh, young lady, she's a freshman in college, 18 years old, and she read 30 books in 30 days. Uh, and I wanted to find out not how, I know how, I taught her how, I wanted to know why. And I found out her mother was dying of terminal cancer. Doctors gave her mom two months, just 60 days to live. And the books she was reading were books to save her mom's life, books on health and wellness and alternative medicine. And I get a call from this young lady six months later after she goes through my program and uh, she's crying. And I find out their tears of joy that her mother not only survived, but is really getting better. Doctors don't know how or why. The doctors are calling it a miracle, but her mother attributed 100% to the great advice she got 
from uh, her daughter who got it from all these books. Whoa. And in that moment, I realized two things. I realized, again, if knowledge is power, learning is our superpower. And it's a power we all have, regardless of your age or stage or background, your education level, financial situation, gender, history, IQ. The other thing I, you know, I realized in that moment was my, my dharma, my, my mission in life, which is helping people in this area to have their best, brightest brain and to be able to learn, learn faster. You know, can't be better than this story. I already got goosebumps. Literally. Yeah, I call, I call, I call them truth bombs. Poof. Truth bombs. Totally. Jim, what motivated you to really switch from being a person who was learning to a person to become a teacher to teach others? What motivated you? Like you could be like, okay, I'm done. I'm happy. I will focus on myself, do something else. It's probably anything good for me. I feel like came from my, my parents. I was very blessed in that area. Like, you know, when my parents immigrated here, my dad was 13 and... They didn't have money or network or education, um, but they just uh, were good, hardworking people, very kind and helpful. And so they instilled those values. Um, and so I try to honor them with that. I, um, I feel a moral, what motivates me is a moral obligation to share what I know, to take my mess and turn it into my message, um, to turn, I think adversity can be an advantage. I think a lot of your listeners probably went through gone through hard times and come out of it stronger you know and maybe they're still in that process and they inspire people with their grit and their grace but i feel the life we live are the lessons that we teach and you know for me the greatest fulfillment i have is helping somebody show them their their real potential and that really lights me up and so i think passion is what lights you up and a lot of our listeners could have think different hobbies and things that light them up But I feel like purpose is how you use your passion to light somebody else up. So like learning is my passion. It wasn't always, but learning is my passion. It lights me up. Teaching people how to learn is my purpose because it lights, it lights them up. I love that, Jim. Jim, if you can share with the audience just one piece of advice. Like I'm not, not going to talk a, a lot about it, but like just one piece of advice for people who really want to. There are a lot of people who want to read. Literally, I know a lot of people, they don't read because it takes from them a lot of time. What is one, like one quick nuggets, I would say, for people to read a little bit faster? So if people were connected on social media and people have seen pictures of me with Oprah or Elon Musk or individuals, people always want to know how we connected and how we bonded. And I'm telling you, the answer is we bonded over books. You know, my mentor said you read to succeed, right? Leaders are readers that if somebody has decades of experience and they put it into a book and someone can sit down in a few days and read that book, you could download decades into days. You can read books on negotiation, on uh, financial literacy, right? On entrepreneurship. And it's a great education, right? Um, people don't realize that, you know, the average person reads about one or two books a year. That's unfortunate. True. Most a lot, most CEOs read a book a week, 50 books a year, and that's a huge advantage of knowledge and wisdom that you can make better decisions on. There's a quote in Limitless that says, life is the letter C between B and D, where B is birth and D is death, life C is choice. Right. So we have these choices that we can make, and I think reading is one of them. So everybody has a to-do list. I think it's important to have a to-learn list or a to-read list. Uh, to read a book a week, even if you didn't have our speed reading techniques and everything, it's pretty manageable, meaning the average book has about 64,000 words. The average person reads about 200 words a minute. So that means it takes 300, roughly 320 minutes to get through one book. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a lot of time, but if you divide it by seven days in a week, it's about 45 minutes a day. Wow. So if you read 45 minutes a day, you could get through one book a week, 52 books a year, and that's like a MBA, a PhD in any, in any, you know, uh, any field. Right. Um, and so what I would say, first of all, is schedule that 45 minutes, because if you don't put it in your calendar, you're not going to do it. You know, we schedule meetings, investor meetings or doctor appointments, but we're not scheduling our personal growth True. and, you know, and our learning. The second thing I would say that you could do to help you get through that in less than 45 minutes is a technique we teach using a visual pacer. Meaning when you read on a digital device or a physical book, if you underline the words, not touch the screen or touch the book, but just use your finger, a pen, a highlighter, you're not inking anything up. You're just using it to help you focus. You'll read 25 to 50% faster across the board. 
and you, people don't have to believe everything I'm saying. They could it's, go to a book that they're I, reading. I learned it from you, <laughs> and I'm doing it. Yeah, they could they literally <laughs> test yourself. Put a mark. Put a mark in the margin where you're reading. Time yourself on your phone for 60 seconds. Put a mark afterwards. Count the number of lines you read without your finger, and then pick up where you left off on just underlining the words for 60 seconds. Put a mark in the margin. Count the number of lines. That number, without even it practice for most people will be 25 50 percent uh, greater and that's just huge if you could improve your reading speed 50 percent then you'll save 20 minutes on every hour mm. you know and that's why it's so important because the average person who's listening right now has to read about four hours a day in school or in their job and you know that's a lot of time if you could just double your reading speed you save two hours a day right two hours a day over the course of a year is you know even one hour a day over the course of a year is 365 hours divided by a 40-hour work week it's nine weeks two months of productivity mm. you get back saving just one hour a day or uh, just reading faster Jim, i love that Jim. so jim you're saying that an average person can literally read a book a week so 52 books a year yeah with just scheduling your reading and then also using a visual pacer it'll take less than 45 weeks. minutes a day some people, if they read twice as fast using their finger, they'll do it in 20 minutes a day for a week. You get through one book a week, Perfect. you know, 50, 50 books a year. Jim, let's go towards retaining the memory part. Yeah. So now people are reading. We got them to read, to learn and read faster. What can yeah. we do to make them retain the information? I believe two most costly words in life and certainly in business are I forgot. Mm -hmm. Right. You think about the consequences of saying, I forgot to do it. I forgot to go to that meeting. I forgot what I was going to say. I forgot that conversation. I forgot that person's name. You know, all that. We just lose time, trust, hurt a relationship. Uh, we could lose a sale. You know, on the other side, memory will make you money. When you could easily remember client information or product information, give speeches on video or on stage. Uh, public speeches without notes, right? When I mean, you can learn vocabulary and business vocabulary, facts and figures and data, you are a, you are a knowledge expert, right? And that's knowledge today is not only power, knowledge is profit. Um, now, how do you improve your ability to remember something? It, it really is comes down. There's three parts to memory. You encode a memory, you store it, and then you retrieve it. So let's say you want to be better at remembering names. I think remembering names is the number one business etiquette networking True. skill there is. Yeah, because how are you going to show somebody you're going to care for their future, their business, yeah. their health, their finances, their family, whatever you have to serve them if you can't remember True. their name, right? There's that quote, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you yeah. care. And, you know, when we forget someone's name, we, we, we say, we're saying they're not important or that we don't care. And so to remember names, very, very simple. Um, uh, you know, on stages at events that I speak at, if there's time, we'll pass around a microphone in an audience and 50 people will introduce themselves and I'll memorize all their names, Whoa. right? Or, um, and I always tell people, I don't do this to impress you. I do this to express to you what's possible because the truth is every single one of your listeners could do that too. We just weren't taught. There were no classes on memory mm -hmm. back in school. So something very simple, you could remember to remember names, uh, use an acronym, Be Suave. You want to be suave. The B stands for believe, right? Henry Ford has a quote, if you believe you can or believe you can't, either way you're right. You know, your brain is this incredible supercomputer and your self-talk is the program it will run. So if you tell yourself, I'm not good at remembering people's names, you won't remember the name of the next person you meet because you program your computer not to, sure. right? And so at events that I speak at, and I could be on three continents and, you know, in one week and, you know, I'm at the, in the UAE at least two or three times a year. And when I'm doing these events, people will pull me aside and say, I, I know you're a memory coach. They'll say in private, uh, I'm just too old. I'm not smart yeah. enough. I have a horrible memory. And I always say, stop. If you fight for your limitations, you get to keep them. If you fight for your limitations, you get to keep them. They're yours. And so you, your mind is always eavesdropping on your self-talk. So you find yourself saying, I don't have a great memory. Just add a word like yet at the end. I don't have a great memory yet because it keeps the possibility open. So believe first. The E in B swab is exercise, meaning practice, because practice makes progress, right? Like I'm very good at remembering names, but I haven't improved after 30, 60 days of practicing. 
mm-hmm. right? So the so the bad news is it takes effort, practice. The good news is it doesn't take as much as you think. Like once you know how to tie your shoes or drive a car or type, you know how to do it. It's a skill. Memory is a skill. And once you learn how to do it and remember names after 30, 60 days, that's just what you do, right? So, um, I, you know, I encourage people just to practice. And where can you practice? Whenever you meet somebody or if you're watching television or you're looking at a magazine or you're on social media, practice remembering their names, right? Suave, the S in suave, when I meet somebody, I say the name. I repeat it back. Mm-hmm. Somebody introduces themselves, I say it back to them. So I get to hear it twice. The U in suave is I use it. I use it in the conversation, their name. Mm-hmm. You know, I call them by name three or four times in the conversation to help ingrain it to my long-term memory. The A is I ask about a person's name. Now, what can you ask about a person's name? How do you spell it? Where is it uh, from? Mm-hmm. What does it mean? Who are, you, who are you named after, right? But they say a name is the sweetest sound to a person's ears. So everyone's favorite subject is themselves. So you ask about a person's name, right? Um, like like your, your name. Like, uh, it, it's, it's, it's pretty... It, have you met a lot of people who have the no, similar no. name as you? <laughs> Not so, yeah. No? Safe, no. <laughs> And then how do you tell people to pronounce it's, it? It's safe. I always uh, give an analogy of a safe box. So it's, yeah. Yeah. And, it, and, people, and then people can say, how do you spell mm-hmm. it? How do you pronounce it? Is what it for it the mean? money, and, not for you know, the money? And like, you understand, we go into this. Uh, this right, way. right. Something <laughs> like that. True. So you could ask, take a couple minutes and ask about a person's name. I feel like most people are flattered that you're interested in it. The V in suave, be suave, is visualize exactly what you just said. You could visualize meeting, you know, if you and I are meeting and, uh, you know, picturing a safe, that you're carrying a safe. And a picture is worth a thousand words. And you keep this in the privacy of your own mind. So for me, if somebody whose name is Mary, I would imagine them carrying, uh, getting married Mm -hmm. or carrying lambs. Like Mary had a little lamb. Or someone's name is Mike, I would imagine them singing karaoke on a microphone. And it only takes a split second to do that but it engages more of your brain. And if you could see it, hear it, and feel it, there's some kind of comedy exactly, or yeah. humor there, you're going to more likely to remember it. So I feel like visual, the V is visualize a uh, person's name. And then finally, the E and B swab is end. End the conversation saying goodbye using their name. Because if you could go into a room of strangers and meet like 15 people and leave saying goodbye to all 15 by name, who are they all going to remember? They're all going to remember True. you, right? And that's an that's a standout skill. That's what truly makes you un unforgettable. Wow, I love that, Jim. One of the best books that I read is literally Limitless. It came at the time in my life that I wanted to pump up my learning, and Limitless was the best book that helped me speed up my everything. Okay. There is one section in the book I didn't expect. But it was very important, which is, I would say, the type of food that we consume for our brains. Can you tell the audience about it a little bit and how it's important? Yeah. So there's a whole chapter on something called neuronutrition. Um, Neuronutrition is the nutrition your brain needs. That's a little bit um, more specialized than the rest of your body. And I'm I'm a big advocate getting nutrition you know, mostly from foods when possible. And there are certain foods that are neuroprotective, that nourish your focus and your memory. Some of my favorites, and everyone's mm-hmm. a little bio individual, right? So people could take a, an allergy test, a nutrient profile test, a microbiome test, because mm-hmm. everyone digests food a little differently. Mm-hmm. Um, avocados are wonderful for the brain, the monounsaturated fat, berries, you know, yeah. blueberries especially, I call them brain berries. Uh, broccoli is high in something something called sulforaphane, which is very good for cognitive health and performance. Olive oil, uh, people's diet allows the eggs. Eggs are good for your, your brain. The choline in eggs is a precursor to acetylcholine, which is important for cognitive health and performance and focus. Uh, green leafy vegetables like kale and spinach. Um, fatty mm-hmm. fishes like salmon or sardines, because your brain is mostly fat. It's high in a nutrient called omega-3. Uh, Fatty acids, uh, your DHA particularly, is really good for your brain, essential, really. Turmeric is a spice. It helps to lower inflammation. It's good for your brain. Walnuts, high in vitamin E, very neuroprotective. Dark chocolate 
is good for your brain also. So like the, there's all, the, the idea here is what you eat matters, especially for your, your gray matter. You know, I have an uncle, I would say. He's passing through a very <clears throat> rough time in his life. He's having Alzheimer. It's a very rough thing. Hmm. And I believe all the things in this book will help people, from my opinion, to help against these, these kind of diseases. So thank you, Jim, for this book very much and the content yeah. inside. No, I, I feel for you with your family, you know, your uncle. I, I lost my grandmother to Alzheimer's when I was seven years old. So, you know, it kind of informed what I do today. Yeah. You know, I think like it, it, the things that we go through, our struggles, they become True. strengths and leads us more to like, you know, True. our purpose. Jim, if we're going to talk about the university kind of Jim Quick, uh, Jim, uh, quick Brain, you have uh, different courses like one for the productivity, speed learning. Can you give the audience a little bit of a nutshell? What is this kind of university can offer people? So we have the largest online academy for brain optimization, accelerated learning. We have students in 195 countries, every, every, every country in the world. And the idea here is to fill in the gaps in school and our, you know, our workplace that we weren't taught skills. There's no class mm -hmm. called focus. There was no class called confidence. There was no class called mindset. There was no class called speed reading or memory improvement. So we offer uh, programs that are just 15 minutes a day for about uh, 21 to 30 days. So it becomes real. Like a podcast or a book is good for ideas and inspiration. The, the courses are more for implementation and integration so it becomes just a new sc a skill or ability that's just part of your identity and um you know we do fun exercises in those 15 minutes that teach you how to read faster or improve your memory um it's available at quicklearning.com uh, and you know we're just very proud it's kind of like an army of brainiacs people that come in at different ages and stages but they want to level up their their life by leveling up their learning and uh, a lot of it predominantly are entrepreneurs because entrepreneurs, they know that uh, it, you need it lies on them. Yeah. They have responsibility. You, your brain is, it's not like it was yeah. say a hundred years ago, like where your brute strength, True. today's your brain strength. No longer is it your muscle power and people should still exercise. It's good for the brain, but today it's not your muscle power as much as your mind power. True. Right. And our ability to make good decisions is based on the knowledge that we have. But if we're not learning, you know, and, or we're learning too slow, then we don't have enough in wisdom to make good decisions for our business, for our brand, you know, to, to affect our bank True. account. I love because my second question was, uh, what are the important skills that you see entrepreneurs should develop in themselves these days? Brain power. It yeah. is the brain power. It, yeah, I, I really think, again, the faster we can learn, the faster we could earn when you could easily focus and concentrate and solve problems and read, you know, three times faster than the average person. You just have a competitive advantage in today's knowledge economy, right? We live in an expert economy where we're based in the, our values of society is our expertise. Um, so, yeah, learning every day, but then not just learning every day, but learning learning well every day so many people will learn something on a podcast or in a book and they'll forget it two days learning later well mm, true, know, and that, true. That, yeah very very learning Jim, well. like accelerated learning and how we as i would say like technology is evolving and everything is evolving around us how do you see like the future of it accelerated learning there will be tech involved in it there will, what how do you see it coming or it's all gonna be still in our own hands our own brains where we're we going so i think technology is a wonderful support a tool uh, for us to use to advance even uh, in a new edition the updated version of limitless uh, we have a whole chapter on technology and ai how to use ai to enhance your hi mm -hmm. your human intelligence so even with ai it, for me it's not artificial intelligence it's augmented mm -hmm. intelligence it's just there as a partner for you to perform better and you know be more successful so even uh, I believe the future of learning is personalization. You know, in the courses I've mentioned, we have a like a quick uh, bot. My last name really is Quick K W I K. I didn't change I didn't change it to do what I do. It's my yeah. father's name, my grandfather's name. But you know, we have an AI bot there that we have taught 
all our courses so we could answer questions and personalized learning. With personalized learning, you could um, have space review, you could have AI uh, quiz you to see what you really do remember and retain. Even, um, you know, if I mention uh, something like in this podcast, uh, neuroplasticity, uh, and people don't know what that is, they could go into AI and say, explain to me neuroplasticity as if I am Ooh. 10 years old. Right. And so you can learn, you can learn faster by using technology. We have, you mentioned a, a very popular podcast and, you know, if I'm interviewing an expert, maybe I don't get the book in time, you know, their book in time, I could go into AI and say, summarize this book or, or propose 10 thoughtful questions that they've never, this author, this expert has never been asked before that our audience would really appreciate. Right. So there's there's all kinds of ways of using technology, but I believe the future of learning and performance is mm -hmm. personalization. It's uh, it's a you, we all learn a little differently in the in the new edition of Limitless. We also created a brain uh, type assessment, which is the thing I'm most excited about. I realized that after 30 years as a brain coach, it's not how smart you are. It's how are you smart? Mm -hmm. And we are smart mm -hmm. in different ways. It's not how smart your kids are or your your teammates are it's how are they smart and we all have genius uh, that uh, we could discover and develop and so this brain quiz mm -hmm. we use animals as a representation it's a four minute quiz in the book people could also take it for free for your listeners we put it at mybrainanimal.com mybrainanimal.com thank you it's just multiple choice but when you do it the magic is this um, just like there's personalized medicine based on your DNA, a test, or personalized nutrition based on a microbiome test, we created personalized learning and performance based on this four-minute assessment. And once you understand what your dominant brain animal is, you could apply it towards reading faster, improving your focus, even parenting, hiring, managing, selling based on brain types. So just very quickly in just you know two minutes, I use this code, brain code, and the C stands for the cheetah. So the, the cheetah is their primary trait, brain mm -hmm. trait, is action. They adapt very quickly. They have strong intuition. They thrive in fast-paced environments. The O in code are your owls, and your owls, their primary trait is logic. They love data, they love facts, and they love figures. Mm -hmm. They make decisions very logically. The D in code are your dolphins, and your dolphins superpower is creativity. And you know, the future belongs to creators. These are people that think in pictures. They have mm -hmm. a vision for their brand or their business that maybe other people can't yet see. They're very strong in pattern recognition. And the E in uh, code are your elephants, and their primary dominant trait is empathy. Elephants are very strong in interpersonal skills. They uh, have high levels of compassion. They are your community builders. And it's interesting. We had our team, which is an international mm -hmm. team of a few dozen people. 100% of our customer service elephants. team wow. are wow. elephants because yeah. they have high community empathy. Builders, they are yeah. our community wow. builders. They want people to feel seen and heard. And so once you understand your brain type, you go through the quiz and then we give people a report based on their brain type, specific tips and techniques and tools to help them learn faster, read faster, improve their memory, focus better based on their wow. dominant brain animal. And then we also teach them how to sell better in business for entrepreneurs, because just think about it, like a cheetah, if you're selling to a cheetah, they appreciate directness, mm -hmm. you know, value efficiency. They the small talk because that wastes time they want to just focus on the immediate results but owls if you're selling to an owl like your prospect who you want to turn into a client or a customer an owl respects evidence so talk about case studies show them the research you know the statistics you know be prepared to answer in-depth questions to help them ponder over the decisions a dolphin though if you're selling to a creative visionary speak to their vision, show them how what you're offering mm -hmm. fits into the larger picture or how it can pave a way for future innovation. If you're selling to an elephant, yes, case studies are great and a vision's great, but if you're selling to an elephant, what's most important is they value the relationship. 
They want to feel like um, they trust you. So spend time understanding their needs and demonstrating you genuinely care, genuinely care about them and make them feel seen and heard. But so the idea here is once you understand your brain type, it gives you a lot of power to navigate the world, to learn and perform better. But when you understand your spouse's brain type and your kid's brain type, your your teammates' brown, like my CEO, my, my business partner, mm -hmm. she's a dolphin. She's a creative, she has a vision for, for what we're doing. You know, our CFO mm -hmm. is an owl cool. and we hired for that, right? He loves the numbers, he loves the data. So it, it allows you to step into your superpowers, your element, and it opens up, you know, so many more I'll possibilities do it today. and potential. <laughs> and I'll let you know what's the result. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please. Everyone, you can, when they're listening to this, if they want to do this, um, you'll get some great art, you know, as part of it, you know, when you go through the quiz in four minutes and it's, it's free for your listeners. Again, at mybrainanimal.com, post the art of what animal, because I'm curious true, what me too. your community yeah. is mostly. And then, and tag, Perfect. save, ta tag myself. So we get to see it. I'll repost Super, some of them because you'll tag us, so we get to see it. And I'll gift, and I'll gift, I'll gift wow. a few random wow. copies of. I'll get, of Limitless I, I want to get the new edition. Jim, a quick question because I want to know what success means to you. Success. What is it for Jim? For 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 me, it's it's nice to make a dollar because a lot of people base their success on wealth. For me, true wealth are the things that that money can't buy. So it's not just about making a dollar; it's about making a difference. Right. And so for me personally, it's I don't measure it in income, but I measure it in impact. And even our team, for example, we have our communication slack and we have a channel just on testimonials and our team uploads all the testimonials on social media and our online academy and everywhere else. And, you know, the, 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 when everybody starts their day in different time zones, the first thing they do is look at those testimonials to remind us of why we do what we do. We're small in people, but we're very big in purpose. So success for me is, is impact. As Jim, what are your daily habits to have this optimal brain performance and productivity? Yeah. Not just like from for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I believe first you create your habits, then your habits create you. So some of the things like even now, how I start my day, a few things that are essential. Everybody has you know, Tim Ferriss, Oprah has Tony Robbins. They all have their habits. My habits mm -hmm. are really about getting my brain right, right? Because I'm the, I'm the brain guy. So a few things I do first thing in the morning, I will when I wake up, I don't touch my phone. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I have a video on Facebook, 37 million views just, yeah. you know, from 10 years ago saying don't touch your phone because it, it wires an entrepreneur's brain mm -hmm. for distraction and reaction. You know, first thing when we wake up, but instead I do this thought experiment. I would challenge everyone to do this. It only takes two minutes. When I wake up in the morning, I, I close my eyes and I do a thought experiment. I imagine myself coming back to bed that night. And I, maybe my wife asked me a question like, how was your day? And I say, it was amazing. Today was incredible. You know, we crushed it today. And then I ask myself, what had to happen in order for me to feel that way. And I think of three things personally and three things professionally. And those six things mm -hmm. become my North star for the day. Like on um, professionally, this was one of the things that, wa that was on my list to have a great conversation and really, really uh, pour into your audience. Right. That was one of my six things. So, you know, I, so I know uh, the scoreboard, you know, like in sport. Another thing I do is I, I try to get all the elements into my, into my nervous system, meaning uh, I read thousands of years ago, back in ancient times, Babylonian times, ancient Greek times, they believed everything was made of four elements, mm -hmm. air, fire, water, earth. And so the first 15 minutes a day, I try to get those four elements into my body, meaning I go outside and I get first thing mm -hmm. in the morning and I get grounded. Uh, you know, I touch the earth. It, mm -hmm. it, there's an exchange of electrons. We don't have to go into the science, but it helps you. Uh, it makes me feel grounded ready to feel strong, ready to take on the day, that's earth. The fire is represented by the sun. You know, getting direct sunlight, even 10 minutes first thing mm -hmm. in the morning will help you sleep better at night. Your eyes are the only part of your brain that's outside of your skull and it helps to reset mm -hmm. what they call your circadian rhythm. So even if it's hazy or foggy, you'll still get the benefit. Not so much through windows, because windows would block out, filter out a certain spectrum of light, but outside mm -hmm. 10 minutes, that's the fire. So I have earth, fire. I also hydrate because your brain is about 75% water 
And on my podcast recently, I had a neuroscientist on there saying that if you're just 2% dehydrated, it'll affect your cognitive health and cognitive performance. And staying hydrated, entrepreneurs, to your listeners, yeah. to your alphas, right? Staying hydrated yeah. will boost your reaction time and your thinking speed upwards of 30%. So I, I drink some water mm -hmm. and it's usually some kind of structured water with some lemon mm -hmm. or like electrolytes and then that's water. So I have earth, fire or water. And then the last thing is air. I just do a simple breathing exercise to clear the mental cobwebs in my brain. Uh, it could be box breathing or, you know, it could be alpha breathing, fire breathing, Wim Hof breathing. But a lot of times people are tired not because they're not they need more calories a lot yeah. of time we're tired just because we're not breathing yeah. and even when people are sitting at their desk or they're reading if their diaphragm is collapsed their posture is collapsed the lower one-third of your lungs absorbs two-thirds of the oxygen and so a lot of people are tired not because they didn't True. sleep well it's just they're not getting enough air so i think it's important love them. so those are some of the things you know every day i read I read every day. I think you have to yeah. read to succeed at least 30 minutes a day. Reading is to your mind what exercise is to your body. Is there any time for reading which is optimal or it depends from a person to person? Yeah, uh, we, we have a whole program on this. Mm. It's based on your chronotype. Some people are early birds. Some people are night owls. I mean, just like working out, you're going to get the best return mm -hmm. when you have the most energy, right? Um, you know, and so for me, I break down my day where in the morning, I, I do three, I do three things a day yeah. and not everybody could do this. And I don't always get it perfect because, you know, my schedule, life, kids, but in the morning I create, right. I, I write, mm -hmm. I do podcast, I, I, I create then in the afternoon I consume yeah. and that's where I'm listening to podcasts or reading books. I'm consuming or having conversations. Uh, and, the, and in the evening I clear, meaning I want to get in when I, at night in that parasympathetic rest and digest place. And I just clear my mind. So how do I do that? I can meditate. I could journal. I could plan my day the previous night so I could clear my mind. So I'm not ruminating, thinking about this so I can get a good night's sleep. So again, I break down my, my day into create, consume, and then clear. And that's a big part of a simple way anyone could do. And the things I'm mentioning, by the mm -hmm. way, like the four elements, it's free. And it doesn't take a lot of time. And if you have a family, you could do it with your family. Right. I love that. Jim, we are in the Alpha Talks show. And if I ask you the question, what's an alpha for you? How do you define an alpha? Alpha. I mean, I think in the spirit of, of this alpha, uh, this conversation, you know, alpha is like the embodiment of, of leadership is the embodiment of uh, courage it's the embodiment of a relentless pursuit to personal excellence you know it's not about alpha is not a, for me about dominating others um it's about leading oneself first you know mastering your mind setting an inspiring example for others uh because I, again i think the life we live are the lessons we teach so an alpha is someone for me that's constantly learning constantly growing, constantly challenging themselves to unlock their fullest potential. We have a section which is the quick fire. It's going to be a, a list of questions very quick. So what's your go to brain boosting morning routine? I mean, I mentioned some of the things I do, you know, I think for elements. And the other thing I would say is uh, exercise. When you exercise and you move your body, as you move your as your body moves, your brain grooves. You create dopamine, serotonin, mm -hmm. endorphins. You also create something called BDNF, brain derived neurotropic factors, which is mm -hmm. like fertilizer for your brain. So I must exercise the first hour of the day for my brain. What's your favorite memory improvement technique? Um, something that we teach in Limitless called the Memory Palace. This is a 2,500 year old memory technique from ancient Greece where you take places you're familiar with, like your kitchen or your body or your school, and you place information around that area. So like when I was talking about my favorite 10 brain foods, imagine having avocados on the top of your head, using it as an yeah. air conditioner. Imagine blueberries mm -hmm. coming out of your nose. Imagine yeah. broccoli stuck in your teeth or cleaning your ears with olive oil or an egg stuck in your throat. You know, mm -hmm. most people after going through that in literally five seconds, will remember those five brain foods. So it's an example of uh, the memory True. palace. What's, What's your, your best, best productivity hack? 
Um, I use something called the Pomodoro technique. Pomodoro technique, Pomodoro means uh, tomato, and I have a tomato kitchen timer on my desk if you're watching on video. It says that uh, your focus dips after about 25 to 40 minutes. And so I work in sprints of 25 to 40 minutes. Um, and then I take a five minute brain break to hydrate, to move my body, to do some deep breathing. And I do another 25, 40 minutes. But I feel like it, that's where I'm most energized. I retain information. I'm clear thinking. So it's called the Pomodoro technique. It's wonderful for productivity. What's your dream collaboration for a quick brain? I would say like university, a dream collaboration. All right. So anyone who's listening, we're open to collabs. Um, we're looking for ways to remember my, I define success for me, for us as a team, as our ability to scale our impact, to build better, brighter brains. So our dream collabs are with individuals or organizations that could help us get our message out to more people. We donated 100% of the proceeds to Limitless, um, my author proceeds to charity. We, we've built schools fully funded in Ghana, Guatemala, Kenya, also uh, Alzheimer's research um, we funded also. And so a dream collab for me is somebody who has a, who has a shared mission of improving people's lives. And I think everything starts with the brain. Red eye wear, if you're watching this on video, a brain yeah. on my shirt. I'm always pointing on my brain in True. pictures because what you see, you take care of. And my, my message to everyone is what can you do today for a better, brighter brain? So a, a dream collab would be, you know, any, any company, organization, team, individual, influencer who wants to help us to make a better, brighter world. Because you change your brain, you change your life, you change your brain, you change, you change the world. True. What's your favorite? Who's your favorite superhero? <laughs> um, that, that has changed. Uh, I was with uh, Stan Lee, the co-creator of all the yeah. Marvel, and uh, he wanted to meet Richard Branson. And I introduced them at dinner. And in the car, I asked Stan, who's your favorite superhero? And he says, Iron Man. And he says, Jim, who's your favorite superhero? And he had a, a tie with Spider-Man. And I said, Spider-Man. And he says, with great power comes great responsibility. You know, Stan said that in his iconic voice. And yeah. maybe I hit my head too many times. I tend to, when I read or hear, I reverse words sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I heard something different. I was like, You're, it's right. With great power comes great responsibility. And the opposite is also true. With great responsibility comes great power. When we take responsibility for something, we have great power to make things better. True. So Spider-Man is one of my favorites. Um, Batman is on the cover of you know my my phone cover. <laughs> I, love, I love Batman too because uh, he's because he's human and he he's trained in every martial arts. You know, and he's very smart. Um, you know, great detective. And True. you know, I feel like it's uh, you know superpowers True. are trainable. If you could teach children one lesson only, what lesson? If I could go back to that eight-year-old kid that was struggling and suffering, it'd be two things. Uh, number one, going back to a great responsibility comes great power. I would say I am 100% responsible for my life. And the second lesson I would teach a child is everything is figure outable. Your brain mm -hmm. is the most incredible technology on the planet, and it could solve all kinds of uh, problems. And so the, the two lessons are... You're responsible for your life and everything is figure outable. Wow. What is something that somebody has told you that has hurt you and you've never forgotten? I mean, it's, it's a double edged sword because I think there's a bright side on everything. But that that teacher at nine years old at the time heard me by saying that's the boy with the broken brain. Yeah. But I also have no animosity to that teacher because because of it. We hear a lot about post-traumatic stress. We don't hear a lot about post-traumatic growth. That c coming out of it, you know, I don't know one strong person safe that had an easy life. And I feel like struggles lead to strengths. I think challenges lead to change. And so while at the time it was very hurtful being called broken, it also put me on a path where you know, I was able to help, you know, millions of people who may be labeled the same way. True. I love that. If I ask you to describe yourself in three words, what will be that? Um, my values, I'm very value driven. So my values are love, growth and contribution, you know, and that's how I define success, love, loving relationships, because um, I feel like that's true wealth, growth, and I grow so I have more to contribute. 
Um, and so those are the three things that, that are I really hold dear to my heart and is, is love, growth, and contribution. I love them. Jim, what will be the, your last message you want to leave the audience with today? Going back to the quote in Limitless that um, life is letter C between B and D, birth, death, life C is choice. My message to everybody is I believe these difficult times, they could distract you. These difficult times can diminish you or these difficult times, they could develop you. We decide, we always have a choice. And the three things we could always choose is our mindset, our motivation, and the methods we're using, our head, our heart, our hands. You know, my message to everybody listening is this quote that's been shared, you know, countless times uh, that, you know, that I said decades ago is that your life is like an egg, which is a brain food. Your life is like an egg. If an egg is broken by an outside force, life ends. But if an egg is broken by an inside force, life begins. Great things begin on the inside. And if you're listening to this, you've already, you were on this journey together. If you're listening to this, you have greatness inside of you. You, you know, you have genius inside of you. And now is the time to let it out. I believe that there's a version of yourself that's patiently waiting. And the goal is we show up every single day for ourselves until, until we're introduced. True. I love that, Jim. Jim, if the audience would like to reach you, what is the easiest way and the fastest way? Yeah, so our uh, Limitless book is at limitlessbook.com. Um, my Brain Quiz, definitely there, My brain, uh, mybrainanimal.com yeah, yeah. to take the free quiz. We also have a nutritional guide if you want more about brain nutrition. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a whole chapter in there on neuronutrition, but I uploaded it for free for everyone at brainnutrition.com. And those are my favorite nootropics. These are supplements that have been science-based, human studies to improve your focus, your memory, your mood, your mental energy. Wow. And then on, on social media, I'm everywhere at Jim Quick. You said to spell it right, Jim K-W-I-K. -K. And again, I would, I would challenge everyone to take a screenshot and tag safe, tag myself and share one thing you're gonna do for a better, brighter brain. Of course, and I will add all these in the description. Jim, it's been a pleasure and it's an honor as well. And thank you very much for being with us today. I am sure everybody listening to us today got a lot of valuable information. They just need to do the actions. I appreciate it, Jim. Thank you very much. Thank you, safe. Thank you, everybody. That wraps another inspiring episode of today's show. I hope that this episode has ignited your inner alpha and left you feeling inspired, motivated, and ready to conquer any challenge that comes your way. Remember, Alphas aren't born, they're made. It isn't about dominating others. It's about embracing your authenticity, leading with integrity, and making a positive impact on the world. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe to the Alpha Talks on your favorite podcast platform. Leave us a review and share the podcast with your fellow Alphas. Also connect with us on social media at Safer Hakim. Share your thoughts, insight, and stories of personal and business growth with us. Let's create a movement of alphas supporting one another. The world needs more alphas like you exactly. Until next time, stay bold, stay driven, and stay alpha.